In today's tutorial, let's do the granny motif crochet booties. These are heirloom, christening, and really kind of fancy booties for babies from sizes six months all the way to 12. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we have a new pattern released by Yarnspirations called the Granny Motif Crochet Booties and you can see them here in the photo. These are christening quality. These are heirloom quality. These are fabulous and these are really kind of a delicate work here and you're gonna be noticing it's asking for Peyton's Beehive Baby Sport and that the size hook is really quite small of 2.75 millimeters or a size C. Just as a full disclaimer today, I am using a four millimeter size G crochet hook today because I struggle with the smaller hook like so in tutorial format in order to get you to see the stitches. So just substitute what you see here uh, for the C and the 2.75 millimeter and let me indulge myself and show you with a larger hook. So my booties will appear a lot bigger than normal. So what we're gonna be doing is working our way through the instructions and you see that there's different colors. So you have six months that is more of a red and 12 months that is more of a yellow. In the pattern, whenever there's a size difference in the pattern, it will give you that indication here. So it says chain 20 seven but if you were that's for the six month but if you were to do the 12 months it's chain 31. So anytime you see that there's a digit like that that has a color then it means that you need to do something different for that particular size. So right here it says repeat the last round and then if the one size is two times and the other size is three times. So I'm gonna be using the six uh, month size today here in tutorial format and this is quite neat. So let's uh, get off and let's uh, start working on this pattern. Grab your yarn and your crochet hook now. To start today's tutorial, you're gonna be starting off with the motif. It's a granny square here. They're on both sides so it will tell you to make two of them here in the instructions. So what we're gonna do is concentrate on that first and then we're gonna start working our way around the sides like so and continue along in today's pattern. So let's start off with doing the granny square. So let's get started today just as a disclaimer. I remember I'm using a four millimeter size G crochet hook. I'm using a thicker yarn than normal with the Peyton's Beehive. So me make sure you substitute back to the 2.75 millimeter or size C. For tutorial reasons I'm using a bigger hook and bigger yarn so you can see all of the stitches more clearly. So we're gonna start off with the slip knot and we're gonna create the granny square and we're going to start off by chaining four. Remember the one on the hook never counts as one. So one, two, three and four. Let's insert our hook into the beginning chain. Just go right in, yarning over and pulling through both of the loops. And now you have the starting ring of your motif. So let's uh, begin to do the next section. So let's go around the center of the ring. It's gonna be nice and tight in there. And this is the straggler. I want you to just wrap it around the outside like it's part of the ring so it gets stuck underneath. So first round what we're gonna do is chain three and that counts as a double crochet and you're going to double crochet two more times into that same center. So go right into the center of the ring and double crochet as normal. So one and I got two. So this is one side of your granny square. So to keep on going you have to continue along and you have to chain two. So one and two and what you need to do is then going into the other into the ring again three more double crochets this time. So one two, three and that's another side complete right there. Okay so what I wanna do now is I wanna do another corner so it's chain two so one and two and then coming into the center of the ring again and I want three more double crochets. So if you've done granny squares you can honestly do this really quite easily. Okay, now you got three sides done. You can see that. So chain two to turn another corner and I want you to put in three more double crochets again to the center of the ring. So you need to do two of these um, uh, motifs that when you're doing these uh, particular booties for obvious reasons you need one for each. So to finish off then going all the way around is that you need to chain two and then join it to the top of the first chain three like so. So just join it pulling it through and through. So let's move along to the next round. So right where we are right now what we have to do is we have to advance ourselves to this corner over here so completely to the opposite. So what I need you to do is that I need you to slip stitch into the next double crochet that you run into and the next one. So two in a row that you're slip stitching and slip stitch into the final chain two that over there. Okay and now we're ready to begin. So we're gonna begin by starting off a corner and we're gonna chain three and that counts as a double crochet and then two more double crochets in that same space. So we're forming the, the corner. 
like this and then we're chaining two to turn the corner and then three more double crochets back into that same space. So one, two and three. So this is a full corner that we just turned and what we need to do then is that we need to go back and continue along. So let's uh, continue to do that. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna chain one and we're gonna start off in the next corner. So each corner is gonna be the same. A three double crochet. So one, two and three followed by chain two to turn the corner and then coming into the same space. So one, two and three. Okay, so I want you to do that same thing going all the way around. So chain one and then three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet into the next one and I'll meet you and then do that again. So chain one in between them and do that again and then I'll meet you here at the end. I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm coming up all the way around. So remember I have to chain one because that's what I do after I do my group of three and then I'm just gonna join it to the top of the first chain three that I had started with. So I've now gone all the way around. So what I'm gonna do now is that we're gonna go one more round and then this is gonna be um, it for this. Remember that the size of my hand it is gonna be much bigger because of the size hook that I chose for tutorial reasons. So to start round number three we're gonna just advance and we're just gonna go into the next double crochet for a slip stitch and to the next one. So there's only two in front of you there and then into the chain two space in the corner. So we're gonna start exactly the way that we did it in the row below. So chain up three, two double crochets into the same space. One and two and then to turn the corner remember it's chain two and then three double crochet back in. So the only difference of this round and the last round is that you have a new gap that's now in the middle of your your granny square where it's right there. So to get into there we have to chain one first and then we're gonna put three double crochets into that chain one space. So one, two and three. Just like that. Chain one and then coming into the next corner. So every corner is gonna be the same. It's gonna be uh, three double crochet. So one, two, three. Okay chain two and then three more double crochet into that same space. So please do that all the way around in the same manner and I'll see you at the end of this round and that's it for the size of the granny squares once we get all the way around and then we can continue along in today's tutorial. Okay once you get all the way back around you did your group of three chain one and then you just join to the beginning the top of the three of the chain three. Now you're done with this uh, particular square and now we're gonna just fasten off. So please do so now in just grabbing the yarn and what I would recommend, this is baby booties, this would probably be heirloom quality. So what I would do is just uh, get your darning needle out and just weave in the last edge here or the last uh, tail. So just putting it into there. If you go in and out of your work three times, so just kind of gliding up underneath the stitches just to hide it. Okay, so just going in one direction. Okay, and then going in the other direction through a different path but very close to it. And then back in the other direction one last time in a different path. You pretty well have guaranteed your ends are never gonna fall out. And if you got a baby wearing these you don't wanna see ends. You wanna see the baby's face and not be uh, captivated by the tails hanging out. Now you were bearing the, the loose end as you went so just get rid of that and now you have to do that. So you need two of these to, in order to do your baby booty. So let's continue with the next part of today's tutorial. So here we have the finished granny square and what we're gonna do is that we're gonna circle around a portion of it. So we're gonna go down one side through across the other and then down the other and then we're gonna skip over and do some chain work where the baby's foot slips into the to the booty. So this is really more at the top of the foot. So right where I did the slip stitch here uh, this is where I'm gonna leave it here and I'm gonna start on the first corner. So let me just uh, turn that up and I'm gonna start here. So what I want to show you here is that in the next part of this instructions it says work seven single crochets and when the term work doesn't say put uh, seven single crochets into the stitches it says work them because right now there's currently three here three and three which makes nine plus two chain one spaces which is ten and eleven. So when it says to work seven single crochets you'll notice that there's not enough um, stitches in seven to get all the way across. So it says to work it. So what you have to do is that we're gonna start off in the corner and then we're gonna skip the first stitch here and single crochet into the next two. Skip over where it uh, does here. 
do the, the middle three and then we're gonna skip over this one and then do the, uh, the first two and skip over the other one and do that in the corner. So if you can see it from this perspective, I can hold right here. You can take a screenshot if you wish. I figured out how to get seven in there to keep it even. So let's uh, begin to do the next round. So let's begin and this is where I've done the slip stitch here when I brought it in and I'm gonna start in this corner here. I want to bring up my new yarn here. Do not create any slip knots. I just want you to fold it and then just leave a generous tail here so that you can bury that in. I want you to go right into the chain two space in the corner and pull through and I want you to drop the yarn that ha is, is gonna finish off the straggler right on top and we're going to bury that in. So I want you to chain one first and put two single crochets into that same space. Okay, so one and two. So this is where it comes to being that work seven single crochets in. So skip the first stitch, go to the second just like there and I'm just gonna move my sheet because I wrote it down here and I wanna see it off camera here just to bear with me for a second. So I'm gonna just go to the middle one of that first group and I wanna lay this straggler down on top so it gets stuck underneath. So go to that one and to its next one. So that's two of seven that I'm working in. I wanna do the three middle so don't worry about this chain one space. Just skip right over it and do the three middle for single crochets. Again keeping that straggler down on top and buried in. Okay, so that will be five of seven that we had to work in across. Skip the next chain one space and then just single crochet in the first two and not the three. So just do the first two only. Okay, and then you're going to then start the next corner. So in the next corner what they have here is that there is amount of stitches that will go in the corner and I'm just reading it here off camera and what we're gonna do is that we're gonna put three single crochets right into a corner space. Okay, so let's do that. So one, two, and three. So we're now going to do this side here and this side the same as the way that we started. So let's uh, begin to do that. So we skip the first one and we go to the, uh, the two last ones of that first group. So just single crochet. So one and two. Okay, skip that next chain one space and go right into the middle three. So one, two, and three. Okay, skip the next chain one space and just do the first two only and there's your seven along this side. You're gonna notice that it's gonna start buckling and that's okay because that's what you want to happen to form that top of the foot nicely. Okay, now once you get the first, these first two done, skip the last one and come right into the corner. So there's gonna be three into that corner. So one, two, and three just like this and let's do one more side together. So skip the first one, do the second, the, the second and third one for single crochet. Okay, skip the next one and just do the three middle. So one, two, and three. Okay, skip the next chain one space, just do the first two only on this, uh, this one here. So one, and two and if you remember that we started off with two single crochets right in this side so in this final corner here there's only gonna be two here. But we're not quite done yet. We still have to go all the way around. You're noticing that this is turning up which is good. I'm just gonna turn it down the other way because it's more accurate to the photo. So now I have to chain 27 for this size. I'm doing the six month size. If you're doing the other one it's chain 31. So just do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, and twenty seven. Once you have that done, you want to just fasten this to the other side. So this would just be like this. Okay, so the baby's booty uh, but a foot is gonna go right in here and I want you just to without this chain all twisted up just to un make sure it's not twisted join to the first single crochet on the other corner just right across and what I want you to do it says in the, in the instructions I want you to place a stitch marker here. So this is where that stitch marker is gonna come into play in this particular section so we know when we're going all the way around. So just place this string through 
and this is just a holder just to give you a visual indication of when or what things are happening next. So right now you should have something that looks like this. So starting up we want to do round number two. Very simple round. So we're gonna chain up three. This counts as a double crochet. One, two and three and I want you to double crochet in each stitch going all the way around this footing here and once you get to the chain there's only 27 chains in this size. There will be 31 if you're doing the other and I want you to place one double crochet in each one of these chains and then uh, slip stitch it back to the beginning. So just uh, remember just a uh, double crochet one into each one of the stitches going around and including into the chain as you go. So make sure you go right into a chain. Don't go around the chain as the sense that make you wanna make sure you get into each one of the chain spaces. So please do that all the way for round number two. So I just did my double crochet all the way around. I wanna make sure that when I do this is that I wanna make sure that this double crochet is not twisted in any weird way. Okay, so just follow it around. Okay, make sure that it all looks the same at this point because the first time you go around is the most important. So when you go to join it, make sure that it all looks like it's going to, to match. So there's no weird twisting. So it doesn't mention anything about a stitch marker at this point. So I guess it's gonna come later into play. Just join it to the top of the first chain three just like so. Okay, so the, the real trick is to make sure that this first uh, section is not twisted. So let's move along to round number three. So round number three we're gonna chain up one coming into the same one underneath and you're gonna single crochet in each stitch going all the way around. So please do that uh, one single crochet in each going all the way around. So I'm just finishing up round number three. It was one single crochet in each and then I'm just gonna join it to the first single crochet. Round number four it's gonna be the same thing. You're just gonna chain up one and then one single crochet in each single crochet all the way around. So please do that. So just one single crochet in each stitch going around. So I'm coming up all the way around again single crocheting and then the last one I just have to uh, join with a slip stitch to the beginning. So in rounds, uh, the next rounds, next two rounds for my size of six months is two more of what we just did and if you're doing the other size then uh, it's three more rounds. So just chain up one and one single crochet in each and I'm gonna do two rounds of this then and I'll meet you back here and if you're doing the other size you're gonna do three rounds at this point from this point forward. So okay, so I'll see you back here and I'm just gonna get my two rounds complete. So I've now just completed my two rounds that I needed to do. Again, this is a monster size booty because of the size of hook and the yarn I've chosen to use. But this is what it will look like at this point. Actually it looks kind of a, like a child slipper at this point. So what we're gonna do now is that we're going to start establishing the sole. So we're keeping our stitch marker in place. Don't get rid of that and let's do the first round of the sole. So working in the back loops we're gonna do one single crochet uh, only. So if you're new to crochet there's always two strands when it comes to a string or uh, to a stitch. So going into both of them is a stitch. Go into the first one is a front loop and going into the other one in the back furthest away from you is a back loop. So what they want you to do is chain one and going into the back loop only. Okay. They want you to single crochet around. So just diving into the back. Once you do the first one the other ones will appear really quite easy for you. And you're just gonna go this. This is gonna create a natural bend in the fabric of your booty to create the sole looking shape. So it will create a definite line underneath. So just do one uh, a single crochet in each back loop going all the way around and I'll see at the end of this round. So coming all the way around I'm continuing on the back loop only of single crochet. And then I just wanna join it to the top of the first single crochet that we started with. So that becomes that. So let's review what's gonna happen in the next round. So in the next round what we're gonna do is we're gonna start decreasing the sole so it wraps around the bottom or the base of the foot. So what we have to do is pay attention to the stitch counts because it's slightly different because you have a section here where it's gonna be just like all the turning is right in the ends here. So what we have to do is watch for how things are gonna go and we're gonna take this around really quite slowly. So as most of you know I like to use diagrams and we're gonna move on to round number two. I've actually done round number two I think five times and I keep getting it wrong. So I, I have to resort to drawing a diagram for myself in order to get it right. And there's nothing wrong with the instruction. It's visualization. It's a big paragraph to me and I'm getting confused. So right now I'm starting here and I'm going to single crochet seven in a row. The next two would then become together and then I'm gonna do the next three by themselves. Single crochet. The next two will be to come together and then the next three will be by themselves and then finally these two come together and then there's a total in my size of 17 single crochets 
back to the wards, the back of the heel. Then we're gonna pick it up again. So once they get 17, the next two are together, the next three are by themselves, the next two are together, and then the next three, and then two together, and then the final 10 are gonna be back to the start. So I put a diagram line here across. This is the center line. I know it's kind of odd um, here, but I'm just trying to indicate to myself. So we're gonna be decreasing on the front of the shoe or of the booty here and we're gonna decrease it here on the back as well. And hopefully if you wanna take a screenshot, now's the time to do so of this and I'm gonna continue the rest of the booty kind of filling this in as I go. So let's do that diagram and let's uh, do the instructions. Either way you're gonna be good to go. So you're gonna chain up one and it's one single crochet in the next seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. The next two are gonna become together. So put those together. So just insert your hook in and then go into the next one. Insert your hook in. You have three loops. Pull through all three and that's it. Uh, single crochet two together. So that we're, that's one of the three that we need to do. So the next three are gonna be by themselves. So one and two and three. And the next two are gonna be together. Just like that. Okay. And then the next three are gonna be together uh, by themselves. So one two and three and then finally the next ones are two together. So now we're gonna head 17 single crochets in a row. So let's do that. So we've got one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Okay, so now that my 17 are, in, are done for my size, the next two are gonna be to come together. So put those together and then three in a row. So one, two, and three. And then the next two are together. Okay, and then the next three are by themselves. So one, two, and three as I'm heading to the back of the heel here. And then finally the next two are together. So the remaining stitches then right back to the beginning. There should be 10 of them there for you and they're just all each single crochet each. So please uh, do that and I'll meet you at the end of this round. Okay, coming up to the end of the round, I've just finished my 10th as I was supposed to and then I'm just gonna join it to the top of the beginning. So you're gonna notice it's gonna be kinda coming in a little bit, not too much yet, but we're gonna begin to move up to the next round. So let's look at a chart and see where we're gonna go. So I'm back on my chart, I just figured it out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain one and we're gonna do the first five as single crochets coming around and then the next two are gonna be come together. The next seven are going to be single crochets and then the next two are com coming together. Then as we move around because I'm doing my size, the next 15 will all be single crochets as we move our way back to the heel and then the next two together and then the next seven are going to be single crochets and then the next two together and then the final 10 are coming right back to the very beginning. So let's do this. So let's begin round number three and what we're gonna do is the first five are gonna be by themselves. So chain up one and single crochet in the first five. So one and two three, four, and five and then the next uh, two are together. So put those two together and then what we're gonna continue to do, the next seven will be by themselves. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven are by themselves and the next two are together. So put those two together. And now in this size here it's 15 stitches and the other size it's 17 so 15 in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 14 and 15. The next two are gonna become together. So put those two together. And then the next seven are by themselves. So one, two, three, 
four, five, six, and seven. And the next two are together. It's the final time you're gonna do that. And now the final going all the way back to the beginning. There should be ten stitches left and fill those in with just single crochet and then slip stitch to the beginning single crochet. So one, two, three, four, this is five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And that takes me all the way back and then just join it to the beginning single crochet. Let's move up to round number four. Let's go back to the diagram. So I'm about to start round number four. So round number four we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna do five single crochets in a row. The next two are together. Then we're gonna do another five single crochets in a row and the next two are together. And then what we're gonna do, you just don't see it here, but the next fifteen here are all gonna be single crochets and then the next two are together and then the next five are by themselves, the next two are together and then the final ten here are going to be single crochets. So please do that all the way around. This is uh, round number four and I'll see you here in just a moment. I'll show you what to do on the project itself. So I'm just gonna finish off this chart and get you started. So let's begin the sample here. So we're gonna chain up one and there's gonna be one single crochet in the first five. So one and two, three, four, and five. The next two are together so put the next two together and then the next five are by themselves. So one, two, three, four, and five and then the next two are together. So put those together and now in my size here that's fifteen stitches in a row. If you're doing the other size it will be seventeen. So I'm gonna do fifteen. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, this is ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. So now the next two are together. So put those two together. So one and two and the next five are by themselves. So one, two, three, four, and five and then the next two are together and now that's it. So the final ten that are left with you is that there's just gonna be one single crochet in each. So let's do that. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay and then join it to the beginning single crochet. So that concludes off round number four. So it's got round number five next. Let's go back to the chart. So round number five we're gonna chain up one and the first five are gonna be single crochets. Then the next two are together and then it'll be three single crochets by themselves and then the next two are together. You have another fifteen here for my size here going across and then the next two are together and then three by themselves. The next two are together and then finally the last ten are gonna be by themselves. Let's do that on the sample next. So let's chain up one and one single crochet in each of the next five. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is being able to put the next two together. So let's do that. So put the next two and then the next three are by themselves. So one, two, and three and then the next two are together. So one and two. So now we're gonna continue down, down, down the side and in my size it's uh, fifteen stitches In the bigger size is seventeen. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 
14 and 15. So now the next two are together for me. So let's put those together and then the next three are by themselves. So one, two and three and then the next two are together and finally the next ten are by themselves and that will take you all the way back to the start. So do that and I'll see you there and then we'll continue with the final round. So when you get all the way back to the beginning here then you just join with the slip stitch and let's move on to the next round. Like so. Okay. So if you're not sure what's happening at this particular point is that the inside here will fold in and we'll be doing a seam line really shortly. So we're actually doing the bottom of the sole here if you don't recognize exactly what you're up to at this point. So let's uh, move on to the next round. So this is the final round of number six. So we're gonna chain up one and do the first five as single crochets. The next three will be three or two together uh, single crochets. So put the next two, the next two, the next two. You're still gonna do fifteen but you're gonna notice that you're off by one stitch and you're gonna carry on here fifteen in a row and then the next three, one, two and three will be two togethers. Okay and then the final eight will be one single crochet each. Let's do that for round number six. This is the final round for the bottom of the heel. So let's begin. We're gonna chain up one and one single crochet in each of the next five. So one, two, three, four and five. So the next two are gonna be come together. So put those together. So one, okay that's one of them and we need to do the next two together. This is two of the three that we need to do and then the next two are together. So three right in a row of two togethers. So now we're gonna carry down the other side and it's fifteen. So we're gonna do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14 and 15. So once you get your 15 in the next two are together and now the next two are together and finally the next two are together. Just like that. So the remaining eight that you have left is going to be a one single crochet each. Please do that and slip stitch it to the top of the beginning single crochet and I'm gonna show you what to do from this point because you're done the bottom of the sole. Okay so now I've just joined it and now you're gonna fasten off this yarn. So we're gonna have to um, sew this heel together and what we're gonna do is just fasten this off first. Okay and just weave it in and out of a few stitches. If you wanna use a darning needle I'd probably recommend it. It is for a baby so let's do that instead. It takes you a little bit more time but not enough to worry about it. So we're just gonna feed this in underneath the stitch work this will be the side that you can see. So if anything you're gonna wanna stay to the inside of the project. So let's turn it around and let's do the inside. So I'm just brought it out the inside here. Go back in the other direction just staying on these fibers on the this side. Try not to let it to seep to the other. So go two and then back the other way for three. Just like that. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna fold this in half and I want you to do it from the inside of of the sole. So right now we're looking at the outside of the project. So just turn it um, inside out like so and what we're gonna do is fold this in half along the base of this and we're gonna sew it together and just whip stitch it. So I want you to fold the slipper in a way that it looks like this. It's upside down here and this is the inside of the project and all I wanna do is I wanna fold it so that I can see the slit that is opened here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run some whip stitching across. So make sure it's folded directly in half. So just making sure you're getting it completely right and you're gonna be able to sew. So what I wanna do is put that stitch marker back in. Don't wanna lose that. It hasn't addressed that yet and I don't wanna get confused on where I am in this project. So let me just put that back in. So now that it's folded in half I can see that the edges are lined up. What I want to do is get my darning needle and I wanna feed the same color yarn and I wanna put a slip knot in the other side. So watch what I do. I'm just gonna go across the project into the stitch work just directly across and I wanna put most of this string through, not all of it and I wanna stop and slow down right where that slip knot is gonna be and I wanna feed that through and that will lock onto itself right there. 
So all I'm just gonna do is match stitch to stitch on the outside and just going straight across. This is called a whip stitch. And I'm using that straggler string. Do you see how I'm trapping that underneath the stitch work so it gets stuck? And that's what I'm doing. So all you're just gonna do is just match it and all the way down and then I'll show you how to fasten this off and hide in your loose ends once you get there. We're not quite done the booty yet though. We still have the ankles to do after this step. As you get close to the other side make sure you get all the way over to the other side. Just uh, now just use the needle and just kind of tie a little mini knot here. Nothing uh, huge because the baby's gonna be maybe stepping on it you know six months. I don't know if they're still walk, they walk at that age. I, I never had kids myself to know that. So anyway I just added a little knot and what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna use the darning needle and I'm gonna hide it in like I showed you before. I'm just going back in and out three times on the um, granny square like I showed you. So let's uh, begin to do that. So I'm just gonna go in and I'm just gonna glide it keeping it to this side of the project. This is the inside of the, sh of the, of the, the booty. So keep it on the inside and then glide back in the other direction. This is two. and then glide back in the other direction for three. So now that it's in three ways it doesn't, it's not gonna fall out on you here. And the whip stitching is appearing on the inside of the, of the booty as well because it's inside out. Trim that, you can trim the yarn that you were carrying over that you were hiding and now you can turn this back and look at it from the right perspective and the base of the booty is now done. So you can see that you've got a sew line along the base on the underside. Now this is a massive booty because my hook size and my yarn um, but this is what it will look like at this point and obviously in the size that is more appropriate for the child. So you can see it's all really quite nicely done here. So let's uh, move on and we're gonna carry on and do the ankle next. So let's begin to start doing the ankle and it's very strategic on where you need to start. So this is what it looks like at this point and it looks really quite cool. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start right here. So the first line that we have to go, we have to go right over top of this, this granny square. So you can't start over here because of, then you're on the back. So we have to start right here. So let's uh, begin and no slip knot please, just a, a loop. And we're going to insert a hook into the chain two space that is in the corner of the motif like we had before and just leaving that straggler down on top we can trap that under in a position. We're gonna chain one and we're only gonna put in this one here is that we're going to put one single crochet into the same stitch, uh, into the same space, okay? So if you remember when we went around this we put in three single crochets somewhere around here in this corner. Well you had already done two here, this is the third. So we now have to work seven across evenly. So do you remember when we did that? So we skipped the first double crochet and we did the next two of single crochets burying in that straggler right in top of, into the stitches. We then skipped over the chain one space and we did the three middles. So one, two and three and then we skipped over the chain one space and we did the next two double crochets. Just like that and then we have to go back into this chain uh, two space right in the corner again for only one single crochet and that then you get your three that you needed before. So let's uh, continue along and what we're gonna do is that we are going to then crochet and do a single crochet along the remaining of the, the loops all the way to the very beginning and we'll join it to the first single crochet. So just looking down and we just immediately just see where the first single crochet is or the first stitch and we just single crochet into that area and we just carry on all the way around. I have a loose end hanging out here that's what you're looking at. So I'll trim that later and I'm just going, going into one single crochet into each stitch going all the way around the back of the heel area. So as you come all the way back around this is the last stitch here and then I'm just going to join it to the first one which is existing in that first chain two space. It was the first single crochet that we had started with. So slip stitch that and let's move on to row number two or round number two. So this is classified as the eyelet row and what we're gonna do is chain three which counts as a double crochet again and we're going to um, double crochet into the next stitch. Okay so just looking where we are so we're just going to the next stitch for a double crochet and now we're gonna start a repeat pattern going all the way around. So the repeat pattern then is that we chain two. Okay we skip two single crochets and double crochet into the third one like so. 
Okay, and then continuing along is that we chain two, skip the next two single crochets and double crochet into the next. So this is gonna be an eyelet row. This has a lot of um, uh, um, gapping spaces in it. So chain two, okay, skip two, and then double crochet into the next. Please do that all the way around. So we're getting all the way back around and what we have to do, it says omit the last one that you have to worry about. So uh, because of the, the repeat pattern, you don't actually slip stitch. Okay, so you don't, sorry, you don't actually chain two to finish. So you just join it to the top of the beginning, chain three, like this. So now you have all these spaces in behind in order for the eyelet rounds. So let's move along to round number three. So let's begin uh, round number three. We're gonna chain up three, counts as a double crochet. We're gonna double crochet into the next one. And now we're back on the eyelets again of the spaces. So in the, each space there's gonna be two double crochets. So one and two and then double crochet into the next. Okay, so then the next one, there's two, it's a space so there's gonna be two in that one and then double crochet into the next double crochet and continue to do that all the way around. I'll see you at the end of this round. Okay, once you're all the way back around, just join it to the top of the beginning chain three. Okay, so that you can see that you kind of filled in those spaces just like that. Let's move along to round number four. Round number four, we're just gonna chain three and it'll be just one double crochet in each double crochet all the way around. So it's a very simple round, just one uh, double crochet in each going all the way around to see at the end of this round. Okay, once you're all the way back around, just slip stitch it to the top of the beginning chain three. So that was round number four. So round number five is really again a very simple round. So chain up one and it's one single crochet into each going all the way around. So just one single crochet in each and I'll see you at the end of this round for round number five. So now coming all the way back around, I was just single crocheting and now it's time for the final round. Okay, so this is what it looks like so far in big format. So now the next round we're gonna create picots. You'll see that those are little points that are on the top of the, the, the leg area of the baby. So we're gonna chain one and we're gonna single crochet into the same one. Okay, and now we're gonna form a picot. So chain three, one, two, three, and insert the hook into the first one right there. Okay, do you see that? Yarning over, pulling through and through. And I want you to single crochet then the next two in a row. So one and two. The next one is a pico. So single crochet in, chain three, one, two, three, and just insert in. Okay, so just going in, pulling it through and through, and then single crochet the next two. So one and two, and go to the third one here, and then pico one, two, three, and going in, pulling through and through. Okay, please do that same thing going all the way around. When you get all the way back around, you're just gonna finish off and you did the pico right away, so there will be a two um, single crochets in the final if you're doing this, the proper stitch counts. Just slip stitch it to the first single crochet and you are done and use a darning needle and fasten off your yarn. You'll notice that you have the nice pico points at the top. So fasten off the yarn just like I've shown you before. Use your darning needle, hide in your loose ends and we just have the drawstring to make next. Okay, so all we're missing now is the drawstring that goes through the anklet here and it's a really quite an easy uh, thing to do once you, you have this in the right uh, size. This would probably be even super cuter right now. I feel like it's a frankenfoot uh, really. <laughs> it's got, it's kind of big that way. So it's a kind of cool, this would actually be uh, probably a great little slipper for somebody uh, done in this size. I don't know what the size this is. Let me uh, just check that here and then you can actually see if you could make that into a slipper. So there's about uh, five and a half inches on the inside of that. I'm not sure what size of child that could be, but it actually be really quite cool. So let's uh, do the drawstring next. So let's begin to do the drawstring using the same color yarn and what we want to do is we want to chain 80. So just I'll leave that to you to do that. So just one, two, three, four, five, go all the way to 80 for me and see me back here in just a moment. So now that I have my chaining of 80, I wanna go second chain from the hook and I want to insert into the back loop of that chain only and slip stitch. So just pull through and through. This may take you a little bit. So just again going into the back loop only. Once you do the first one they will uh, be available to you. You kind of see that they pop up. It's like a reptile and what you're doing is you're creating a nice uh, shoelace kind of idea of doing this. So just slip stitch yourself all the way down on the back loops of this or the back humps of this chain. 
So I'm just doing the very last one here and what I want to do then is uh, fasten off and I want to use a darning needle and get rid of these loose ends and I want to put them, woven them in like I would any other like finishing off a regular project. So just insert this into a darning needle and just weave it in and out of the very end here and please do that for both of these and I'll see you back here in just a moment and then we'll weave in this into the booty. So now it's time to put my shoelace in and I want to just work around the outside here. So I just want to kind of start and just weave it in and out of the anklet area that we left those gaps in. That's why we did that so that we can fill this in with a shoelace. And again you might want, you want it, might want to be strategic about it. Uh, you have to figure it out you know if it's balanced and stuff. So this is really more decor than anything in my opinion but you know you may use it depending on uh, if the baby's gonna kick off their uh, their booties or not. And you're gonna get all the way back to the start here. Okay. So what I wanna do then is once I'm satisfied with it make sure that they are the both length and then just tie a nice little bow tie like so. Like that. Okay. So now you just gotta shape it and um, because this is a lot bigger than the original uh, sample um, it probably will not uh, be as deformed looking as etc like this but it's a really kind of a neat idea. It's really quite fun. It wasn't really that hard. The bottom of the sole kind of threw me off a little bit but uh, other than that you know Rome wasn't built in a day they say and either is the booty. So this is actually not a bad pattern. Um, I actually quite enjoyed it and I think it's gonna be uh, quite a, a popular one as well. So this is it for now. Until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as yarnspirations.com. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.